Example 2 says Xander and Felicia have $30,000 for a down payment on a home and their budget can accommodate a monthly mortgage payment of $1,200. What is the most expensive home they can buy if they borrow money for 30 years at 7.8% compounded monthly? So we are trying to figure out the value for A sub N. That's the value that is unknown. We know that the regular payments are going to be $1,200. And we know that the loan is happening over 30 years and the payments are happening monthly. So that's 12 times a year. So in total, there will be 360 payments. And we know that our annual interest rate is 0.078 and we want to divide that by 12, which will give us 0 0.0065. And now we can go ahead and plug these values into our formula. So we have R is equal to A sub N times I over one minus 1 plus i to the negative nth power. So we know r is equal to 1200. a sub n is our unknown value, so I will just leave that there. i is 0 Okay, and then if I were to solve that for a sub n, I would multiply both sides by the reciprocal of what is inside the brackets. So we would end up getting that a sub n is equal to 1200 times the reciprocal, which is going to be 1 minus the quantity 1.0065 to the negative 360th power divided by 0 0.0065. And if you throw that into your calculator, you will find that a sub n is approximately 166,696 dollars and 65 cents, which um, if Xander and Felicia live in the Seattle area will basically get them a cardboard box. Uh, so let me just write that. This represents the max cost of a home they can afford. All right, the next thing that we want to talk about is called an amortization schedule. So we can construct an amortization schedule that summarizes all the information regarding the amortization of a loan. It's basically like a table that has a bunch of information about the loan in it. So example three says create an amortization schedule for a loan of $10,000 with an interest rate of 10% that is to be repaid in five equal annual payments. So the first thing that is going to help us is to figure out what the size of the payments are going to be. So R is equal to 10,000 times. Our interest rate is 10%. And we know that um, we have a total of five payments. So our n value will be five. And if you throw that into your calculator, you will find that that is $2,637.90. So what that means is over the lifetime of, a, of the loan, we are going to be paying 
five equal payments in the amount of $2,637.97. And a portion of that uh, amount will go to the principal, and a portion of it will go to pay the interest. So in the first period, We know that the payment will be $2,637.97. And we want to calculate how much of that is going towards the interest. And the way that we calculate that is we know that um, the interest rate is 10%. So we would calculate 10% of 10,000. So 10% of 10,000 is equal to 1,000. So the interest for the first payment period would be $1,000. And then the Depending on what kind of amortization schedule you're looking at, sometimes you'll see it say principal in this column, and um, your textbook calls it the balance reduction. So it just depends on where you're looking or who you're talking to. So if $1,000 is going towards the interest, then the rest of the payment will be going to the balance reduction or the principal. So if we subtract if we subtract this by this, that will give us the principal amount. So that's going to be $1,637.97. And then the last column that we can look at, we could call it the unpaid balance. And so if we initially had a loan value of 10,000, then in order to get the unpaid balance after the first period, we would do $10,000 minus the balance reduction amount. So if we do that subtraction, then we end up getting that we still have an unpaid balance of $8,362.03. Isn't that crazy that $1,000 that you're paying is just going towards interest? So like this amount is what's going towards paying down your loan and the interest is just like a fee that the bank is collecting. So they are definitely making bank off of your loan. <laughs> So let's go ahead and calculate these values as well for the second period of our loan. Again, we know that all of the payments are going to be the same amount, so $2,637.97. Now, how much of that in the second period is going towards interest? Well, what we're going to do now is this is our new unpaid balance amount. Previous to that, I guess if you want to think about it as period zero, our previous unpaid balance amount was 10000 but now it's $8,362.03. So we would calculate 10% of that to get our new interest amount. So if you calculate 10% of that, that is $836.20. So just like we did in the previous version, to get the new principal or balance reduction amount, we would take the regular payment amount and subtract the interest amount. And if we do that, then we get $1,801.77. So if we take that amount that we just calculated it that we just calculated and subtract it from the unpaid balance from the previous year 
then we would get that our new unpaid balance is $6,560.26. So I've gone ahead and just calculated the the amortization schedule for the first two pay periods. And you can continue this pattern to fill out the entire amortization schedule. Um, that's going to take a little bit of time. So I've gone ahead and just showed you what that looks like here in this typed out table. One thing that I do want you to notice is that initially I said all of the payments are going to be the exact same amount, but please do notice that the last payment is three cents higher than the previous four payments. And the reason that is, is because um, we need the remaining balance of the loan to be zero. So in order to make that happen, you have to pay three cents extra in the very last payment. And this is a very common thing. Like if you're paying for a home or a car, it's very common that the very last payment is not the exact same amount as all of the other previous payments.